The BMW 3 Series has always had two important qualities linked to it, that it's very efficient and that it's equally comfortable. Now if you remember, there was a GT version based on the regular 3 Series, but because it was a notchback and the fact that uh, it had frameless doors and a deployable boot spoiler, uh, it was always seen as a much more special car. Unfortunately, the GT is long gone, though BMW has replaced it with a new car, which I feel is just as special. So, ladies and gentlemen, I bring you the all-new 3 Series Grand Limousine. The 3 Series Grand Limousine, as you can tell from the name, is all about luxury and grand proportions, specifically the length and the wheelbase. At 4819mm, it's 110mm longer than the regular 3 Series. Now, looking at the difference in wheelbase, it's easy to tell where all of the extra length has been added. And it's all here right at the back. So, this is the long wheelbase version of the regular 3 Series. And I have to give it to BMW for getting the proportions so right even after extending the middle section, which is basically the floor and these rear doors. To my eye, it doesn't look ungainly or heavy from any angles. The 3 Series Grand Limousine is priced close to the Mercedes C-Class, though in terms of size, it's much more substantial. It's longer, wider, and of course has more room in the cabin, especially in the second row courtesy of the longer wheelbase. Now, this isn't an entirely new model, but a midlife facelift, so the design changes are quite limited and the whole car sits more or less the same as the previous long wheelbase 3 series. Nevertheless, the entire range, including the 330Li petrol and the 320LD diesel, come with M Sport package as standard, which means a larger central air intake, a rather sharp bumper design, and lastly, 18-inch alloy wheels with a staggered tyre setup. The ones in the front are 225 section 45 profile tires, while the rears are much wider and are slightly lower profile at 255 40. The 3 Series Grand Limousine then lives up to its name when it comes to size and road presence. It is, after all, the longest car in its class now. And let me tell you a fun fact so, its wheelbase is just 7mm short of the old F10 Generation 5 series, which was sold up until 2017. It's no secret that the future of the traditional executive sedan is in jeopardy. After all, a lot of them are slowly losing their sheen amongst luxury car buyers who tend to replace their old sedan with crossover of some sort or a proper SUV. There are some exceptions though, and the good old 3 series is one of them. After all, it has held its own against the rising number of crossovers, including the ones from BMW, that is the X1, the X3, and the X4. And in order to keep it on top of its game, BMW has brought this facelift to India soon after its global launch. Everything inside has come from the regular 3 series, which is hardly a surprise. Uh, what's surprising though is the number of small yet significant changes that have been made to this cabin to make it look more 2023 than 2020. So for instance, the biggest upgrade inside this cabin is this uh, curved display for the main infotainment screen and the instrument cluster for the driver. Uh, speaking of which, this uh, entire display and uh, the center console, they both are angled slightly towards the driver and if I'm honest, this setup reminds me of uh, old BMWs, especially the E46 and E39 gen models. Something that's definitely not a throwback to BMWs of yesteryears is the fact that BMW is pushing for digitalization big time with this midlife upgrade. And that's exactly why there are no physical buttons for the climate control anymore. Now, fortunately or unfortunately, it's all controlled through this iDrive screen now, which as you can see, uh, shows you the fan speed and the AC controls amongst other things. But to me, this system is a little fiddly to use, especially on the go. And ultimately, it's just one more thing uh, to get used to for your everyday drives. <music> the 
The other big physical design change is that the Grand Limousine now gets a toggle switch instead of a stubby gear lever like in the old car for the 8-speed automatic gearbox. As for the all-important iDrive, it's running BMW's newest operating system 8, which I should add is more intuitive than before. However, I am not a fan of the menu structure once you go beyond the tiles on the home screen. So BMW says they have designed it to make it look like a smartphone interface, but to me, it looks very generic and the kind of UI you will find in non-branded multimedia systems. The 3 Series Grand Limousine is all about space and comfort in the back, so let's jump in and see what it's like. This cabin, uh, it definitely has an airy feel to it, and that's something that I cannot say for the C-Class, which comes in at the same price point. Now, this augmented sense of space is largely down to the long wheelbase format, of course, but there are other things uh, which contribute to the airy feeling of this cabin. Take this uh, panoramic sunroof for instance, it lets in a lot of light. Uh, besides other things, uh, there is also the fact that there is legitimately a lot of space inside this cabin purely because it's a long wheelbase car. It's the second row where the Grand Limousine truly shines. There is more than enough legroom and headroom for someone my height, and I am 5 foot 8. The backrest is also set at a nice comfortable angle. It's just that the rear seat is set a little too low, and as a result, getting in and out of this car isn't as effortless as I would like. The top spec model with the M Sport package that you see here is well loaded when it comes to features. There's the new giant curb display, ambient lighting, a nice sounding Harman Kardon sound system, wireless charging, a 3 zone climate control, both Type A and Type C USB charging ports. While it has many feel good features, it's quite odd that BMW has skimmed on sun blinds and the ability to move the front passenger seat from the rear in a car which is so rear seat focused. The new 3 Series Grand Limousine gets two engine options for India. A four cylinder turbo petrol engine making 258 bhp and 400 newton meters in the 330 Li, and a four cylinder turbo diesel with 190 bhp and 400 newton meters in the 320 LD. I'm driving the diesel model here and let me tell you already, it is smooth, it's refined and uh, there is none of that diesel clatter, uh, even in the first uh, couple of gears where invariably you end up doing high revs uh, as you go along in uh, traffic, uh, especially at low speeds. All in all, there is a little indication that uh, there is a diesel engine under the hood. The noise insulation is that good. What you might also expect from a 3 Series is that it's good to drive and the Grand Limousine is nearly there. The steering is sharp, body control is good, and so is the overall grip. It's just that this longer wheelbase 3 Series can be a little lazy to change directions quickly. The front end is also not as pointy as the C-Class, which in the 300T guys is a lot of fun. On the other hand, the 3 Series Grand Limousine takes well to laid back driving and is naturally a more relaxing car to drive or be chauffeured in daily. The 2.0-litre diesel engine has been around for years and so has the 8-speed uh, torque converter automatic. So it's a tried and tested combination that we all like and for 2023 it uh, seems to have gotten even better. So you have a strong uh, diesel engine and as many as uh, 8 gears to play with, all of which uh, help make this car a really good long distance cruiser. And it's not like you'll be stopping for uh, fuel very often either because uh, the new 3 series Grand Limousine in this diesel format. It's a very efficient car on the highways. In our fuel efficiency test, the 3 Series Grand Limousine achieved 22.03 kmpl on the highway and 13.2 kmpl in the city. Its long distance ability is supplemented with a cabin that remains silent and a ride that's fairly planted. At low speeds, there is a tiny bit of underlying firmness over square edged potholes, but nothing that will make you uncomfortable. The overall ride quality is quite plush and completely in line with the nature of this car. What also left us impressed is the Grand Limousine's ability to clear speed breakers with ease despite the added length. 
Now, the ground clearance is officially rated at 135 mm, but in the real world, it seems more than enough because we didn't have any instance of the underbody scraping even with four adults. Summing up the new 3 Series Grand Limousine is not difficult. After all, it's a long wheelbase luxury barge in a country where sedans with good rear seat comfort are still worshipped. It's a fail-safe formula that has worked for Mercedes-Benz with their E-Class and I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work here. Okay, so it's missing some crucial features which would have elevated the rear seat experience even more. But looking at the bigger picture, I don't think there is another executive sedan at this price point uh, which is more fit for purpose. It's got the style and the grand proportion. So, in essence, this car right here is the new 2023 3 Series GT, right? Let us know if you agree with me in the comments below. And if you like what you have seen, then please subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon for notifications. It really helps. Finally, at what price do you think BMW India will launch the new 3 Series Grand Limousine? Will it be on par or more than the Mercedes C-Class? Do let us know in the comments. Until next time, drive safe and please be kind to other road users.